So, how bad really is our future? Am I really even gonna make it towards like retirement age at the age of 65? You know, I started thinking about these questions ever since I started like finding out these news articles about like climate change and all these other depressing news around the world. So I want to make a video addressing like my perspective on this and like what are my thoughts. Am I just like a negative person? Am I just thinking all doom and gloom? So this is coming from an environmental engineer's perspective. I'm all about like thinking long term here. So just way into the future, you know, maybe 40 years from now, what will our future look like? Are we even gonna make it past this point? Is humanity just like doomed forever? And what am I gonna do about it like right now? Like what are my thoughts? So let's first talk about climate change. Climate change, you know, you've heard it all before. This is due to an increase of carbon dioxide and that's been increasing ever since like the industrial revolution back in like the 1800s. Now before you get all angry at me saying, oh but carbon dioxide, it's natural. I mean look at the volcanoes and like the other animals and humans that are like spitting out carbon dioxide when they're like breathing it out. The weather's always changing throughout the seasons, you know, we had snow this year. So I mean, yes, that is all true. We do have volcanoes and we do have like us humans and animals that are respiring and breathing out carbon dioxide when we're like taking a breath. But we humans are spitting out more carbon dioxide faster than it is natural. So we got things like cars, for example. We have an increasing human population. We have more man-made processes like, you know, industrials, fertilizers, agriculture, farming, construction, and so on. And all of that, it's increasing the amount of carbon dioxide on top of what is already natural. So I'm here explaining what like climate change is and how that relates to carbon dioxide for people who aren't too familiar with it. So now let's get into like carbon dioxide and why it's always like known as the bad, you know, the culprit. So carbon dioxide is a molecule, just like, you know, nitrogen and oxygen, it's in the air. We breathe it in every time we take a breath and it won't like kill us or anything because it's not dangerous. And so that molecule, carbon dioxide, it absorbs heat. It absorbs radiation from the sun. So the sunlight is shining down on the earth. And some of that sunlight, the radiation, it's being absorbed by carbon dioxide. So what that does is that jiggles the carbon dioxide molecule around. The carbon dioxide molecule absorbs that energy and throughout time, it gradually releases it out as a form of heat. And this is like a slow and gradual process. So yes, this is natural. Like this is good for us. This is just what happens. You can't really defy the science behind that out of control, like the physics of the universe. That's just what happens when carbon dioxide is in contact with sunlight. Again, this is all a natural process. Nothing's wrong with it. You know, you got sunlight hitting carbon dioxide, it absorbs it, carbon dioxide releases it through time as heat, and it's good for us. So without it, this greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, without it, the earth would be pretty extreme. So on one side of the earth, where the sun is hitting the earth, it would be really, really hot. And on the other side, where you know there is no sunlight, it'd be really, really cold. Just imagine it like a brick, for example, in a fireplace. After you put out the fire, the brick is still pretty hot. And in time, gradually as the brick cools down, it releases that heat, so you don't have to leave the fire on for such a long time. The brick will just naturally disperse its heat. And you know, the same thing's happening for us with the earth and carbon dioxide. And so that's why we have like this little warming effect. It lags, but it does warm up the earth a little bit. So that's what's happening with carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide, it's not like the only greenhouse gas out there. So there are other ones too, like for example, methane or even water vapor itself. That itself is a greenhouse gas. But we always hear that carbon dioxide is the main culprit because really it's just the most abundant. You have a lot of it compared to other greenhouse gases out there. So now you can see where I'm coming with this. The more we have, the warmer it will be. The more energy it absorbs through the sunlight because you know we can't control the sun, the more energy will be released gradually over time. So you can see the more, again, carbon dioxide we have, the more likely it'll just increase slowly through time. And you can see this warming effect. And so now you know how climate change and carbon dioxide are linked together. So now I wanna go into like other more detailed stuff. On this one website I'm on right now, it's from NOAA. So what this does is just it tracks the amount of carbon dioxide throughout the history of time. So what you can see right now is July 2021 and last year's July 2020 carbon dioxide levels. Currently we're at 416 and last year was 414. So that means we're increasing about two parts per million every single year. And it's been steady like this for like a couple of years. So I'm just trying to connect the dots here. Every year or so we're gonna have two parts per million more carbon dioxide for as long as you continue this trend. So by, I don't know what year, let's say we want to reach 450 parts per million. So I'm going to subtract 450 minus 416, that's 34 divided by 2. In about 17 years from now, we'll have 
450 parts per million if we keep this up. Now, I don't know what else will happen at 450 parts per million, but currently there are things that are bad happening in the world right now. As you can see, the more carbon dioxide there is, the hotter it will get. So we will have things like higher temperatures, higher sea levels because we're melting the ice, hotter ocean temperatures, you know, more rain in some areas because you know, now we're just heating things up. You know, as you heat things up, imagine like boiling water is creating steam. So now all that steam rises up in the air, forms some clouds. It'll rain in some areas and make that area that where you know it took that water from really dry. I mean, there's a whole bunch of science things happening here, but you know, just things that are heating up. If you ever had like some science class, if you heat things up, something's gonna change. Now I remember back in the day when it reached like 400 parts per million, it was all over the news saying, "Oh no, we finally reached a milestone." Probably because it was like a whole number, 400. Eventually, we'll reach 450, and it'll be another whole number. I don't know what it's gonna cause, but I know it's not gonna get any better. We can already predict. And we know for a fact that the hotter things get, the more, the worse it's going to be, you know, more hurricanes, hotter temperatures, higher sea level rise. So imagine how much worse it'll be once you reach that point in 17 years. So in 17 years, I'll be like mid 40s, almost 50. Just imagine yourself 17 years older. And currently we're already living in like a pretty bad environment. So imagine again, how much worse it'll be 17 years from now. We're not going back anytime soon. Things are getting better. How do I really feel about this? Right now, carbon dioxide levels are not going down, and I don't think we're stopping anytime soon. So, reading this other article here, parts of the Amazon rainforest release more carbon dioxide than they absorb. Now let's go back to elementary. You've heard of us humans breathing in oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide through cellular respiration. Trees do the exact opposite. So they take in carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen. So now it's just a whole cycle. So the title is like this, where the Amazon is releasing more carbon dioxide than normal, than they're absorbing is because over there, they're actually burning it. I don't know for what reason, I haven't looked too much into details. But just reading something like this is really depressing. So, like, honestly, I don't think I'm even gonna make it past retirement age. Just looking at this trend right now, seeing how we're gonna reach like 450 parts per million by 17 years from now, and I'll still be like mid 40s, just around 50 years old. Like, it's depressing to see. The fact that we're already taking so much damage right now at like 416 parts per million and we're on a horrible trajectory, about to reach 450 within a, you know, a few years. Like, I don't see how it's gonna get any better or how we're even gonna like keep afloat, especially if nothing changes. So I know I feel like I'm pretty depressing right now. It's like all doom and gloom talk, but if nothing changes, we're, we're gonna reach that point where it's not gonna get any better. And it does take time for carbon dioxide to like go down anyway. Again, imagine bricks. You put out the fire, you know, imagine we just stopped today, cut out all carbon dioxide em emitting stuff. That brick, it's still hot. It's still gonna release energy. Yeah, we're not putting, you know, more fuel into the fire, but that fire, even though it's out, around that area is still hot. So we're gonna feel its effects years from now. And today, at this point, we haven't even put out the fire. So what does this all mean? Honestly, I do see a really dark and gloomy future ahead of us. I mean, we as a human species, we're gonna live, we're gonna get through this. But just knowing the fact that we are gonna be hurting a lot of people, you know, we're gonna be causing a lot of economic damage, a lot of human health lives will be at stake. Knowing that all of this could have been lessened or at least preventable, like that just makes it really sad. The end outcome, like it's predictable, but we're not doing anything about it to prevent that from happening. So what am I going to do about it? And like, what can you do about it? Honestly, there's not much of a difference that I can make individually and there's not much of a difference that you can do either. But collectively, if we all do our part, then at least we can lessen the damage. Of course, educating your friends, your family, and actually taking action, that's like the best thing they could do. Just know that like me recycling that one plastic bottle or me just taking that one train trip rather than taking my car, it's not going to change the world over time, okay? If we all do it together, then it would make a small difference. Again, my one plastic bottle, that's just gonna save like two grams of carbon dioxide. But if we all, in my neighborhood, say 100 people do it, then that's a lot more. So I'm just gonna do my part and do what I can to lessen the burden. Hopefully you do your part too. I don't want it to be where it's like a group project where, every, where only one person like does the most work and then the rest of the other people, like they don't do anything about it. That's not gonna change anything. I mean, honestly, that's really all I have to say about it because I don't really see a bright future ahead of us. 
Again, I know this is pretty sad to hear coming from my perspective, but I'd rather paint a realistic picture and like not, you know, sugarcoat the truth than say everything's all fine and dandy. This is what people need to hear. It's not gonna be good if we just keep it up. So that's all I have for the video. <laughs> Goodbye.